What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Sunday, April 7th, 2024, and I have another emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 2319 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from Ukraine. So, drones hit the Ukrainian Zaporizhia nuclear power plant today. And that power plant is the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. It has six nuclear reactors. So I want to update you on that. We also have some major breaking news coming in from New York City. Apparently, a giant container ship experienced a power outage in the waters near New York City and was safely anchored close to the Verrazano Bridge on Friday night. This incident occurred shortly after a similar situation with another large cargo ship that led to a collision with Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge less than two weeks ago. The U.S. Coast Guard verified that their vessel traffic service was alerted to the 89,000-ton MV Kindeo losing its propulsion around 8.30 p.m. while navigating through the Kill Van Cull waterway, which is the maritime passage between Staten Island and Bayonne, New Jersey. So this is very, very strange. Another massive container ship losing power very close to the Verrazano Bridge. And if that ship collided with the Verrazano Bridge, that would have been devastating. So the timing is very suspicious. And what you're looking at here are some Apache helicopters parked in Allentown International Airport in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I reported earlier that there were going to be dozens of U.S. military helicopters moving from upstate New York to Philadelphia through Monday, and some of them were going to stop over in Allentown and refuel, apparently. Well, here we have multiple Apaches, guys. This is extremely unusual. This picture was taken by a subscriber who lives in the Allentown area. And this person told me that at one moment there were eight Apaches on the ground. In this picture, you can see five. And there were also four Blackhawks and there were multiple other helicopters that came in throughout the day. Some of them stayed for a while. And this person said that they've never seen this before. So I don't know what the U.S. military is doing, moving Apaches, massive amounts of Apaches from upstate New York to Philadelphia. This is insane, guys. Absolutely insane. And they're moving these from the old Griffiths Air Force Base in Rome, New York, which is the headquarters of the East Coast Air Defense Sector, so something's going on, guys. Tomorrow is the eclipse. So the timing is very strange. And here we have some video footage that I shared earlier of some Chinook helicopters flying over Scranton Wilkes Bar area in northeastern Pennsylvania. You can see four of these Chinooks flying over the area. So something is going down. And here we have a picture that was sent to me by a subscriber in upstate New York showing a military convoy heading north on 87 near Saratoga Springs. You can see this one truck here, and it has a sign that says convoy ahead. At least 10 trucks were spotted heading north. Very strange, guys. And here we have a picture that was sent to me from a subscriber in Arkansas. This was at a Walmart parking lot near Little Rock. Almost looks like high Mars launchers here, guys. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three-month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com and the link is in the description below this video. But this three-month emergency food supply has a 25-year shelf life. It includes over 2,000 calories per day.
breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks, all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets, and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page, and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. So something is going on. I don't know what, but I wanted to share that with you. I will continue to monitor the military movements across the country. Something is going on. I don't know if it's related to the situation with the solar eclipse tomorrow. I don't know if it's related to Israel and Iran or Ukraine or Europe. I have no idea, but I will monitor the situation and update you. So we had drones crash into Europe's largest nuclear power plant in Ukraine, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which has six nuclear reactors. So let me just read to you the official update here from the International Atomic Energy Agency. They put this out today. Drone strikes hit the site of Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant on Sunday in a serious incident that endangered nuclear safety and security. Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi of the International Atomic Energy Agency said, for the first time since November 2022, Europe's largest nuclear power plant was directly targeted in military action. This is a major escalation of the nuclear safety and security dangers facing the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Such reckless attacks significantly increase the risk of a major nuclear incident and must cease immediately, Director General Grossi said. At this point, there are no indications of damage to critical nuclear safety or security systems at the site. After receiving information from the ZNPP about the drone attacks, the IAEA experts stationed at the site went to three affected locations. They were able to confirm the physical impact of the drone detonations, including at one of the site's six reactor buildings where surveillance and communication equipment appeared to have been targeted. While they were at the roof of the reactor, Unit 6, Russian troops engaged what appeared to be an approaching drone. This was followed by an explosion near the reactor building. The IAEA team reported that they observed remnants of drones at this and two other impact locations at the site. At one of them outside a laboratory, they saw blood stains next to a damaged military logistics vehicle, indicating at least one casualty. The experts reported hearing kabooms and rifle fire on the site throughout the day. Additionally, the IAEA team heard several rounds of outgoing artillery fire from near the plant. While the team so far has not observed any structural damage to systems, structures, and components important to nuclear safety or security of the plant, they reported observing minor superficial scorching to the top of the reactor dome roof of Unit 6 and scoring of a concrete slab supporting the primary makeup water storage tanks. Although the damage at Unit 6 has not compromised nuclear safety, this was a serious incident that had the potential to undermine the integrity of the reactor's containment system, Director General Grossi said. Wow, guys. So at least three impacts were observed and Russian forces were trying to shoot down approaching drones and they were firing artillery towards Ukraine from near the plant and there appears to have been one casualty. 
There was a military logistics vehicle that was hit by the drone and there was blood stains on it. So one of the Russian troops got injured or possibly killed. We don't know. But this is very serious, guys. It appears that Ukraine launched a drone attack at this power plant. So this is very, very concerning. And Iran has reportedly informed the U.S. that it will refrain from responding to the airstrike in which senior IRGC commanders were killed in Damascus by Israel if a ceasefire in Gaza is reached. And the Iranian foreign minister said the targeting of the Iranian consulate in Damascus was carried out using American-made aircraft and missiles. That's a pretty serious allegation. And Israeli Channel 13 is reporting that the Israeli army is preparing for war with Hezbollah. Okay, so very serious. I reported earlier that the Israeli Northern Command was put on high alert and they're making war preparations, and they're going into an offensive stance from a defensive one. We know that Israel is on high alert right now. They're bracing for this Iranian missile attack. And Lebanese forces party official Pascal Slayman has been kidnapped. Lebanese forces is a Christian anti-Hezbollah party in Lebanon and the largest party in the Lebanese parliament. There is a risk of unrest in the country if it turns out that Slayman was harmed. Wow, guys. So the Christian anti-Hezbollah party leader, Pascal Slayman, was randomly kidnapped, and that could cause unrest. Very serious situation there in Lebanon. And military sources in Kiev claim that Russia has decided to make Kharkiv a gray zone unsuitable for civilian habitation, according to The Economist. So it looks like Russia is going to start attacking Kharkiv. And I do believe that this spring and summer, Kharkiv is going to be one of the cities that Russia tries to take when they make their offensive. I think they're going to try to surround Kharkiv and take it over. If they can't take it over, then they're going to start shelling it. Maybe even Putin's going to drop a nuke on it. I also believe that Russia is going to try to make a breakthrough in the Zaporizhia front in southern Ukraine. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But it's not looking good for Ukraine. All their best troops have been killed or wounded already in the first two years of the war. And Ukraine has a major crisis now because they have to replace these experienced troops with green troops that have no war experience okay they've run out of artillery they've run out of various types of ammunition so it's not looking good for ukraine and i think russia is going to make some kind of breakthrough and potentially reach the dnieper river and potentially they could go for Odessa to try to cut off Ukraine from the Black Sea, but that could be next year. But this year, I believe Russia is going to make a massive breakthrough and the Ukrainian front lines are going to collapse. And it's possible that NATO may send forces to try to slow that down. I don't know. We'll see. And in advance of Monday's total solar eclipse, Ohio officials said that the Ohio State Highway Patrol Emergency Management Agency Fire Marshal's Office and the Ohio EPA and other agencies are assembling in Columbus to organize resources for local partners who request support, according to the official State of Ohio website. And the path of totality is going to go right over Cleveland and Columbus. So Ohio is going to get the brunt of this solar eclipse. And I'm going to be broadcasting the solar eclipse from here in North Central PA tomorrow afternoon, starting 1 p.m. Eastern time. I have some cameras set up. I think I'm at like 95% totality here. So almost a full eclipse in my area. And thousands of protesters outside Budapest's parliament again demanded the resignation of the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The protest began after Orban's former associate Peter Magyar published an audio tape confirming corruption 
in the Hungarian parliament. And we actually have some video footage of these protests. Look at all these people, guys. Check this out. Massive amount of people standing outside the Hungarian parliament building demanding that Orban step down. He's been in control of Hungary for many, many years. And he's basically a puppet of Vladimir Putin. And Putin uses him as an infiltrator into Europe. And a man was arrested after setting the door of Bernie Sanders' office in Vermont on fire while people were inside. And earlier today, we had multiple Russian doomsday planes head east towards the Urals and Siberia. This is pretty interesting and pretty unusual. One of these planes went from Kaliningrad to mainland Russia, and then it went east to the Urals. So it looks like Russia is preparing for something, maybe because of the eclipse tomorrow. I don't know. And this evening, we've had a U.S. Navy Sikorsky Seahawk flying really low off the coast of Kaliningrad. This is extremely unusual. Look at this, guys. At one point, it was just 100 feet over the water, guys. That is strange. I don't know what's going on over here, but this is very unusual, and it's definitely a sign that something is brewing over here in Eastern Europe. Last week, the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, visited his troops on the border of Lithuania where the Belarusian military has deployed an entire mechanized brigade with at least 70 T-72s and several hundred BTRs and BMPs. Those are armored fighting vehicles, literally just five miles from the border of Lithuania and just 20 miles from the capital of Lithuania, Vilnius. And NATO has no forces between Vilnius and the Belarus border to stop the Belarusian army should they go for Vilnius, the capital. They could be at the capital within an hour or less even. The capital is only 20 miles from the border of Belarus, and they could just go right in there and storm the capital, okay? And NATO does not have enough forces in the Baltics to respond, so... We have to keep an eye on that. We have to keep an eye on the situation in Israel as well, with Iran launching the retaliation strike. And here we have some video footage coming out of the southern Urals in Russia. This area was flooded because a reservoir filled up too much and the dams holding back the water gave way. And now there's Apparently, thousands and thousands of homes that have been flooded. Look at this, guys. This is absolutely insane. So I'm going to monitor all these events. I'm going to monitor the military movements going on in Pennsylvania. And I'm going to monitor the situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And I will update you guys if I have any new information. And I will be live streaming tomorrow afternoon starting 1 p.m starting 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 1300 Eastern Time to cover the solar eclipse. So until then, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. 
Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness. So you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past hundred years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232-425 for free information and to get started today.